Hello, uh, JW here. I was just uh, over here uh, playing around on the A100, doing some uh, practicing. Uh, Chuck's here doing a, a video about uh, some lessons online, and uh, he asked me to do a little rundown on some of the instrumentation on the Hammond organ. And I do know a couple of things about it. First thing I want to show you about the Hammond, a lot of people, it's a, these Hammonds were made in the early 70s, all the way back from 38 to like 74, they used a mechanical um, tone generator in them. And so they required two motors, one to start the generator rolling and the other one to kick it into gear and then it disen disengaged, kind of like a Model T Ford in, in relation to the technology that we have today. And there's a, uh, a tone wheel generator, uh, has a bunch of little tone wheels in it. And I think there's one laying right there with that coffee cup, Will. If you'll hand it to me, I'll show you. Uh, in a Hammond organ, there's 96 of these tone wheels and uh, they run they run they're they're built into a, a chassis and they all turn at different uh, well they turn at the same speed once the motors run but they're all shaped different they have mag different size magnets that create different voltages and that's why you hear all these magnificent tones that come out of one of these things so uh, up until about 1974 uh, all the uh, Hammond organs, tone wheel generator organs, had these in them, 96 of them, in the, uh, in the B models and the larger console organs. Of course, the, uh, the spinets uh, had a few less. I think they had maybe 10 or 11 less tone wheels in them. Uh, let's turn this thing off and start it up. One's called a, a run switch and the other one's called a start switch. What you do, the one that says start, is you put it on, and it's gonna stay up, it's, it, the, this, is, this one's been altered, so most of them have a spring-loaded switch on them, which will automatically flip it back as soon as you let go of it. So you'd have to hold it up for about 10 to 12 seconds until you hear that sound that you're hearing right now, which is the, uh, the motor for the start motor. The second switch is the run motor. When you flip that on, that, allow, that allows the generator to start running on its own. Then, after about 12 seconds, you flip that off or you'll start hearing a heavy humming noise and that's, oh, that's what that is, is telling you to turn that switch off, believe me, because you don't want to leave it on. Um, Let's just start with a few basic things here too. If you don't have any of these draw bars out, you're not going to get any sound unless you've got a percussion on which runs off of one of these draw bars. The percussion switches up here is, are uh, on the A100s and the B3s and the M3s. The, the three on the model numbers basically indicates that it's a percussion organ now. The A100, of course, there's no three in A100, right? But it does have percussion. It's the equivalent of a B3 in a different package. Um, now we got the thing running. I want to talk about these percussion things here for a minute. Your percussion on and off, if you turn it off, you won't get any sound at all. Watch me turn. Because that is hooked up to one draw bar which is running one off of one of these sets of tone wheels which gives you a tone for that percussion. You've got your soft, fast, and third. I'm not going to go into a bunch of this because what I usually do is if I could tell you what they all mean but until you hear them with your ear and you like it, it doesn't mean a thing because I'm all about what you like. Okay. Now, over here We've got some, uh, we've got a, a volume, one's normal and the other one's soft, so if you're not getting enough volume, this will kick your volume up, just turn it on. Then you've got your vibrato swell on and off, and if you've got that on, you've got a switch up here, that, a little knob up here that's got different levels of uh, chorus and vibrato, okay? 
What's coarse and vibrato? Some people say, well, that's coarse. Other people say, that's vibrato. When you play with this and get the sound you want, happy days. That's all you need to know. You know, I, mean, I can get all technical with you and take you to school, but there's no reason for it. You, you, you're going to play what you like, what you, you know, if you hear something you like, it's like Chuck says a lot, there's no rule to this thing. You, you know, you play with it the way you like it. These draw bars, I'm going to give you a quick run through on, on a set of them. Another thing is, if you got your draw bars pulled out and you're not getting any sound, it's because these presets over here, which are the black and white keys reversed, what they, what they do, they've got this set of draw bars up here is for this preset. You drop down to this next preset and that's for the next set of draw bars. Like the new instruments today got presets and all. This is all mechanical, electromechanical stuff, so it's, it's just amazing how much wiring and guts is all involved in this. And these others are presets too that are already factory presets, okay? Like we. So I don't even use those. These are my two main ones right here that I use because they control my draw bars. And I'm always messing with the draw bars when I play, trying to get some sound that makes me feel really good and hopefully fits with what everybody else is doing and doesn't uh, hurt their feelings or anything. Now, the lower manual, same thing. You got two presets, they call them. That's your lower manual starts over here. This white key right here, I got my finger on is for the is for the lower manual same thing you it's it's for this set of draw bars right here then your next black key up is for this set of draw bars you know i, I like to keep mine somewhere around here because if i'm messing around i want to hit some bass note something like that and if i want to you know do some cushy stuff you know like like I'm playing around and I want to, you know, I might set something down here to, you know, to get some kind of effect on it or something like that with the Leslie, you know, something, whatever you like. Now, draw bar settings, I want to take, let's push all these in for a minute and just uh, take a look at what they do. Okay, I'm, I'm set up here for this, for this uh, second set of draw bars. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what they do. Cool. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like having... A bunch of instruments right at your right, right at your disposal because you can change all these sounds and get all. There's like I don't know I don't know what the combinations are millions maybe I don't know. Ten dollars. Sweet. <laughs> That's about all there is to it. If you got one, if you can get your hands on one, you know, you're going to need to know a little bit about oiling machinery, electrical things, tubes, the Leslie that goes along with it. Here's the Leslie switch. Fast and slow. Now, some of your switches are going to have three positions because the, the type of Leslie, depending on the type of Leslie you have. And the middle switch would be off, and then to the right would be fast, to the left would be slow. I use, my, I use mine a lot. Uh, a lot of, I wear these switches out because it's a part of my uh, growing up. I, use, I learned how to play uh, with, a lot of, with using my Leslie as part of my expression. So a lot of times when I'll be playing, 
uh, I've, it's almost like second nature to me now, but the Leslie has a lot to do with the, the expression of these things. You know, um, like if I'm playing a solo note or like a, you know, some sort of bluesy thing like that, I'm trying to get some kind of feeling, I'll use that Leslie to kind of drive it a little bit especially at the end of a song when, when the song is like a building to a crescendo or something like that like and what that does for me is when I'm hearing that drummer beating and I'm listening to, my, to the Leslie spinning, and I'm trying to, I'll, I'll be, I might just be tapping it just to hit that fast just for a minute. Until I get to that point where it's just gonna blow up. And then I, then I just let it happen, you know? Let it blow up. Uh, that's the Leslie switch there. You know, it's a lot, it's, it's, it's like you can play one of these without a Leslie. They've got, you know, they've got, they've got a little bit of vibrato in them, built into them. But most every organ player that I've ever met, uh, once they've had a Leslie, they just, they just, they just love it so much that they got to have one. Uh, and you know, the the big consoles that they sold for the churches and everything, of course, all came with some sort of rotating speaker cabinet like a Leslie. And uh, so that's it. If you find a Hammond, it's a tone wheel generator Hammond. It's built before probably 1974. At the latest, they might have built a couple in 75. So you've got yourself a really old piece of equipment that requires a lot of tender, loving care. It, ha it runs off a tube amp. It's a tube amp uh, equipment. These have two amps in them, most of them, and then the Leslie has an amp in it. And you've got to take good care of them, haul them, haul them properly. There's oil ports in the back of the Hammonds. There's three of them on top of the uh, tone generator. You take the cover off. There's an instructions on how much to give these things. You don't want to over oil them. And if you're, if you're moving a Hammond around, and you're tilting it up and down like this and going up and down steps, you got to keep good eye on it because that oil will all run out of the reservoir and your tone wheel generator will lock up and trust me once that happens you're talking you're not you're talking probably a couple thousand dollars to get it back to normal once it's locked up because somebody's going to have to take it all apart and tear it down and re-oil it and everything. The Leslie's have to be oiled regularly because they're under a lot of stress uh, they're constantly running. They create a lot of heat because they've got four electric motors in there running off of a, an amplifier. And it constantly, it generates a lot of heat in the box. Even though they're rotating, they don't keep it cool enough a lot of times. And you've got belts and pulleys that you have to maintain because they will wear out. There's about uh, eight or ten adjustments that that you have to do to get those things to where they, they're balanced and running properly between the motors and the belts. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it's the love of my life. So, you know, it's any time, anybody that owns one of these knows it's a, a labor of love. And, and if you treat it right, it'll give you great joy. Even if you can only play a couple of notes on it, it's so sweet. You know, so have fun with the Hammond. <laughs>